The views, information, or opinions expressed during the Geeks Under the Influence podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of RVA Magazine, Loot Crate, Amazon.com, or their employees. Listener discretion is advised. Fuck off if you don't like it. Something Kyle pointed out uh, on the patio before we got started is this is actually the first Apes movie, uh, both in the pre the the originals and then these ones that you actually saw apes throwing poo. That's right. Yes. That, that was awesome. That Ape was one. so great. Now, as a strategic advantage, like that's fucking it, genius. It was, but how excited were we to have a movie involved with poop? Right. <laughs> Always. Yes. There was cheers we were in the all theater. Super stoked on it. No, but the thing that i was really excited about is not only was it apes throwing poop because that alone like it's great like the, yes. the, 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 the chimp that smells its no- finger and then like passes out that <laughs> um, I was i think the a other prequel night. to this movie but <laughs> <Yeah>. um <laughs> the fact that it was strategery it was it was a fucking like strategy yeah, i'm bringing it back to bush <laughs> era that's the uh, i'm president <laughs> keeping minds for a whole year no but it was it was a military move it was military poo yeah yes <laughs> military, Mi- poo. Mil- <laughs> military grade poo instead of a military coup it was a military poo <laughs> it was after they eat the uh meals ready to eat it's and, like, uh, and like honestly like C4. it was it was like the right consistency too because if it was like you know, like normal poo it just bounced off but it was just like nice wet like thump well not only <laughs> not only that the when rocket was just sitting there like bouncing it in his hand oh yeah get ready just be like come on bring it i got poop but like that sound man <laughs> it was poop. like oh. yeah, <laughs> is that considered like a chemical attack is that like <laughs> Bi- yeah. it's a bio it's a bio it's a bio 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 there's oh my God. title. Can that be Nazi the sequel? Like, can, we get, can we get like another trilogy of just Nazi apes? Be like a really weird uh, remake of Every Which Way But Loose. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, here's here's the reverse. They're going to purge all albino apes. Oh, oh. oh so it would be like it, it would be like a, an ape version of White Man's yeah, Burden. Damn right. It's, it's all. Right. Superior <laughs> species has brown fur. <laughs> Oh. oh no, we gotta we gotta get it moving. Holy shit! Oh, uh, we are talking apparently about uh, ape ethnic, <laughs> ethnic cleansing on this. Uh, <laughs> Andy Circus doing goose stepping across the yard. <laughs> <laughs> but you know he would do it really well. He yes, he would. He is he method would. of shit. Yes, he extremely would. ape-like. We're gonna talk about Andy Circus. We're gonna talk about all things uh, Planet of the Apes, the original series. We're gonna talk about the new series, which is Rise of the Planet of the Apes, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, and uh, War of the Planet of the Apes, which is the new ep- a new movie that just came out this past weekend. Um, this is gonna be very spoiler heavy. So, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers from this point on. The whole ep- just the whole thing. The whole thing is spoilers. Uh, d- there's no part that's okay to listen to. This is all spoilers on this episode, episode one eleven of Geeks Under the, the Triple One. Triple One. <laughs> We're binary in this motherfucker. Almost right here. Oh damn. Yeah. Almost. The, no, I mean one 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 is still binary. It's just not yeah. using the zero. Yeah. We're yeah. fine. It's good. It's, it's, <laughs> it's close a, enough. It's a thing. All right. So, yeah, welcome to this episode of Geeks Under the Influence. Geeks Under the Influence. Thank you guys for joining us for Geeks Under the Influence, a podcast full of spirited debate about some of your favorite geeky topics. Um, we, Before we get started with the Planet of the Apes conversation, let's talk about our panel, the apes on this fucking panel. Yeah. Or at least fucking <laughs> something. Degenerates. Yeah. I would yeah, say degenerates. That, I think there's more gorillas and... Oh, I'm a gorilla. I'm Actually, it's to... the entire band of the gorillas I have with me on uh, this episode. destroy things. <laughs> that would be the best episode to have the gorillas on the that episode. That would be pretty amazing. Talking about gorillas. That would be cool. I, oh, yeah. Can somebody that's... just like sing gorilla style for the drunken scene? We're just like, ooh. Get away from me, you damn dirty apes. <laughs> that sound. What that sounded like was a that? fucking jingle from yeah, the 50s. The hell, like, man. Buy hot dogs. <laughs> no, that was like I was about to scat. Like, speaking of poo. Uh, uh, to my left, the Danwich, the Danimal, 
is here to talk all things ape. And you smell that like one, too. <laughs> <laughs> you and uh, Mr. Scotty P went and saw it last night, correct? Yes, we did yes. at uh, Short Pump. Is he in IMAX? Well, no, no, because no, uh, number one, it, like the, the, this this movie doesn't really offer anything in the way of 3D. You know, so it, yeah, there's I, I not a really, lot. I didn't really see anything with that. Number one, number two, actually, I don't think the the IMAX offered it in 3D. This no, it's around. still uh, Spider Man. Um, well, Spider Man wasn't even in 3D in IMAX. No, because I, I saw that in IMAX when I saw that last week, and it, it's still in standard 2D just for the IMAX screen. Mm. Was it Cars so. Three? Like, what's in fucking IMAX right now? I don't no, know. it's still Spider Man. Yeah, that's what I said. It's still Spider Man. But it's okay. just 2D IMAX, yeah. not 3D. Oh, IMAX. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Still, okay. still, so, still, it's, still, it's a different viewing experience seeing 2D yeah, IMAX yeah, yeah. versus. And it's still, I mean, you still get the the sound associated with it and everything too. And it's yeah, it's the just experience. this go. Yeah, it's just the, kind of this go around. We're just like, yeah, it doesn't really matter for this, and we'll just go see this in the the regular seats, save a few bucks. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the gentleman that went with you to see some Planet of the Ape uh, action or War of the Planet of the Apes uh, action last night, mm-hmm. Mr. Scotty P. Howdy, y'all. The portly white Queequeg. Whew. Uh, new daddy. Just, just going to name off the, the list. The panelist formerly known as Half Lung. Yeah. <laughs> I am a walrus. Cuckoo, cuckoo. And the walrus, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you might have the most nicknames on this podcast. That's my life. It's very, very possible. That's just my life, yeah. man. Yeah. It's like, I don't even know my name anymore. No, just... I just, it's somewhere on a piece of paper for legal reasons, and that's about it. Yeah. So. You're the Nova of our podcast. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. I think oh. you just told me to <laughs> shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're saying you can't speak right. <laughs> <laughs> or just... Uh, I, I, I'm going home. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going home. Well, you get ah, fuck you guys. Uh, speaking of people that cannot speak right, next up is our Philly guy. <laughs> uh, I mean, what are you doing? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Like, uh, we just got a comment on the video game movies episode on YouTube where uh, somebody was actually going in your defense to start being like, there's plenty of good DC title stuff. And then you mentioned he was from Philly. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's right. That's if it's not right. one thing, yep. it's another. No, you're you're gonna strike out on one way or another. I'm gonna give five percent. Thank you. Ninety five percent. Kiss my asshole. <laughs> uh, Mr. Kyle Smash is here <laughs> to uh, smash assholes. Apparently, <laughs> typical Philly. Not, not, okay. We don't smash assholes in Philly. Well, some might. I don't. Know. Depends on how many how many uh, yinglings they got in the tank at that point. Yeah, yeah, once shit. you get a lot of them, yeah. how many of them were in the Eagles jersey? And I think they were all <laughs> bottles, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> we're all just trying to be invincible. <laughs> how many Philly fans Aww. does it take to drink a six pack of Iron City? <laughs> <laughs> One of his friends aren't around. Is that? Is that yes. Is that, yeah. <laughs> all right, to all my uh, Philly peeps out there, we can take them down. Yeah, sure. We'll come. All right. No. Wait, you say you'll go down? What? No. <laughs> Stop asking me to. I told you, buy me dinner first or something. Mm, nah. I um, wondered how you got bastard. green around your mouth. It's because you blew the Philly fanatic, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that what happened? Are you talking about the fuzz around? Yeah, the fuzz. Yeah, the fuzz. fuzz. Yeah. 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 It was very, it was very abrasive. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking about uh, people that know blowjobs. Uh, the next person up. <laughs> I thought you were at least going to say about being abrasive, but you know, hey. <laughs> no, abrasive blowjobs. <laughs> like there you go. He's so rough. Not that I would know. The man that knows how not to use che- uh, teeth, but chooses to anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the sexual chocolate. <laughs> Mr. Lowdown Brown MacGyver's here. What's up, guys? Jersey. <laughs> he's got that Jersey, he's <laughs> that jersey like, jaw. Uh, he's going to fucking decimate me, either on the on the episode or on the break. Yeah, I'm not sure which one yet. Mm, both. Both of them. Yeah. Rochambeau, you. Yeah. Seems like fun. Roche, what? Say it again. Rochambeau. Sorry. That's how the Philly people I say it, I guess. Right? Yeah. yeah, he was trying to say Rochambeau, but he said yeah. Rochambeau. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay, boo. It's all right. Okay. We'll get it right. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Loden, did you see this today? Uh, I saw this today about... Five hours, six hours ago. Okay, so again, just like Spider Man, this is fresh in the mind. Yep, I'm excited. Uh, yeah. This this movie is absolutely fantastic. Oh, it was amazing. Yeah, like oh honestly, God, it's it's so my good. favorite out of the trilogy. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, uh, yeah. Before we get into it, we got the last panelist over there. He's the host. Yeah, that guy. Oh, that guy. The Hobbit. That guy. Where's your comb? My comb. It's You're right. Supposed yeah, to be he, he was your combing comb his beard in preparation to look good for you guys. This. So I, I want to see that beard. I want to see some. Coughed. I want to yeah. see some comments about you know, how good he looks. You know what? Me and Mace Windu have another video, comment? guys. Nothing. Just saying. The color of your. There you go. Yeah. It's there all for you. Our apparatus. Yeah. It's all for you. That's right. Get look that. at the camera and ask if you're pretty now. 
You can't see this on camera, but is a that, piece of Cheeto just fell out. Is that a Brillo <laughs> pad on your face? <laughs> look, I'm trying to grow out the beard a little bit more, and I'm trying to keep it well kept as I do that because I don't want to look like what the apes didn't uh, <laughs> in this movie. As I, I was mentioned, to say, they the, knew the how to take care of The closest they come to is like in the like during a, like when it's raining. But then all of a sudden, like the next scene, it's not raining, and then it's beautiful. And they're again. fine. Yeah, they're it's... gorgeous, luscious coats. Uh, they got a lot of uh, a... very fluffy. They eat a lot of protein. They must. Yeah, they lot got a lot of chimp conditioner in the post-apocalypse. <laughs> apparently, um, yeah. I am uh, Mike the Hobbit Bicket, host of Geeks Under the Influence. You can find me on Twitter at Mike Bicket, or follow the Geeks Under the Influence Twitter at GUI Podcast. RVA. Follow all of our social media stuff. Uh, links to our audio and video of the episodes. Articles by panelists. We've just got an episode or an article out about uh, five things you should think about doing if you're going to the San Diego Comic Con, which will be the weekend after this one uh, when oh, we're yeah, recording. That's right. Yeah. So uh, there's some tips there on how to save a little bit of money because Comic Con is not cheap. Yep. Any Comic Con is not cheap. No, but especially not San the, Diego. The San Comic-Con. Diego. Yeah. You might as well. I might as well take a second mortgage on the house when I go. Yeah, Any I mean, sponsor listening wants to bring us out there. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Shit. We'll do it <laughs> yeah. in a fucking heartbeat. Yeah. Watch. It's gonna be like the fucking Twilight remakes are gonna like get us to go out. And <laughs> like to- <laughs> Any foot in the door. Although we may puke while doing it. Any foot in the door. Let's get that Rick and Morty sponsorship. <laughs> yeah, did that, that. Did we post it? Did we share that? Yeah, we just shared that today. Okay. Yeah, so uh, that that's on GYPodcast.com. That's where you can find all our social media, uh, links to all of our episodes, and also articles written by panelists and friends of the show. Uh, so check it out. All the, all the stuff's right there, as well as links to our sponsors, which is the next <laughs> yeah! thing on the list. We'll we very love quickly you. go through this. First off love is, you. of course, Amazon.com. Not only did we get most of our equipment through Amazon.com, but we continually just buy shit for ourselves, including like when War for Planet of the Apes comes out, you goddamn right am buying that movie because it yes. is fantastic. Oh, hell yeah. Yes. Um, it should yes. be a set, hopefully. Oh, most special fun. edition then, and yeah. all. Well, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I bought the, uh, the Blu-ray of the original <laughs> series. Uh, I don't know, a month or so back for next to nothing, it felt like. Yeah. Yeah, on because only, only one of them is worth a shit. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> well, two, first one. The second one's exactly. not bad. There's some, there's okay. and, then the, and then the last one when he actually gets back to Earth. Mm. That's the one that you get high, you know, and you watch and you just laugh at. <laughs> or you just don't get high and you laugh at. Was that Battle for the Planet of the Apes? Yeah, that something like yeah that, that was the last yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Battle. But, uh, yeah, you can find all that stuff and more at Amazon.com. Just make sure you go to GYPodcast.com. Click on the link at the top right corner of the homepage or on our links page. Uh, and delete if, your cookies. Yeah, delete your cookies so that um, you're going through and it's giving us credit for the link to Amazon. Then just go to Amazon. Order whatever you want through that link and anything that you purchase, we get credit for. So you're spending the same amount of money on your stuff, but we're getting credit and you're helping us buy new equipment, more beer, um, just cool shit to help entertain you guys every week so check that out just by going to gypodcast.com another sponsor of ours is of course loot crate yes, yes. Um, ed weird one of our regular panelists he came in uh, a couple weeks ago and he looked at the shelves behind us or behind my side of the table and he said i always like to judge my friends by whether or not they have loot crate now you can always tell by their shelves of toys because there's pop figures True. and you know like all sorts of cool little nerdy things there's usually a shirt um, coloring books. I mean, just the, the a plethora of a nerd. Plethora. So much shit. You're running out of space. Yeah, there's awesome. I'm coloring literally books. running, you out, are of running out of yeah, space. Yeah, I'm definitely so running out of space. Uh, it's a monthly subscription crate where you get just a little gift that's thematic every month. Like the the one that's just about to drop is uh, animation, which mm-hmm. has stuff from Rick and Morty, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Futurama, and Bob's Burgers. I yep. think are the four. Nice. Yep. So I mean, that talk about a win. I'm stoked. Yeah. All you have to do is go through our link on our, our links page uh, to Loot Crate, and when you sign up, you save three. When checking out, save three bucks off your first crate, so it end up being about 16 17 bucks, and it's well over probably 40 bucks, 50 bucks worth of stuff that you get every month. Yeah. Well worth it. So check it out, uh, Loot Crate, through the link at gypodcast.com. And now on to what we're talking about. Yay. I'm excited. Whoa. 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 What is Whoa. it good for watching monkeys throw poo? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, that's um, basically to start. Judge this, I just want to talk you. about our general feelings on War for Planet of the Apes before we get into any of the the original series and the the other movies in this new trilogy. Fucking awesome! Yeah, uh, <clears throat> the ending to a, a nearly flawless trilogy. Mm-hmm. Probably maybe one of the only true flawless trilogies. Yeah, and you could tell. I mean, it was designed to be a trilogy, so you know it's. 
I, I loved how they left it off, though, too, which obviously we'll get to that more a little bit later. Yeah. Uh, but the ending, I thought, was phenomenal. I can't think of a better way to actually wrap things up. What I liked about it is that finishing off this trilogy, each movie had its own tone. Right. Mm-hmm. This yeah. movie is... Uh, I think the director and the and the screenwriter, I, I think the director actually co-wrote it as well. Um, that sounds right, yeah. Wanted yeah. everyone in the theater to kill themselves. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. Because, now, yeah. th- I absolutely fucking loved this movie. I absolutely loved it. But I'm human, I hate myself. But <laughs> I watched Logan and I was less depressed. And they they kill they oh yeah. god and that movie was that, like that was heartbreaking yeah I I, so. I think I got on like on like I think I I drank myself into unconsciousness after Logan because oh, it was geez. just like you just did that as a many <laughs> okay, ways no, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> at least after the Logan podcast episode <laughs> right right <laughs> this movie was like the ape version of the road oh god yeah oh that's how depressing it was I'm like, seriously yeah like, it was very. Very I don't know. dark. It, well, I, I, yeah, it was dark. I'll give it to you. It was about as stark as living in New Jersey. Oh, shit. Garden State, my ass. I was both making fun of you and making an SNL reference. Anyway, yeah. moving Anyways, on. yes. <laughs> I know. I just don't. I like, I like ruining your jokes. You do a pretty good job of it. <laughs> yeah. I help. Next Next I was about to say, there's a lot of practice on yeah. both sides of that as well. <laughs> but it was dark, but also... Um, one thing I was going to bring up, we were talking about even the IMAX. There are some of the scenes, especially towards the end, though, where the IMAX would have been good for when they're doing the final travel at yeah. the end. Sure. The, you know, you see the sun a lot more. It does start to brighten up, and that IMAX could have really opened up for where you see the trail of all the gorillas and everything like that. Or even before that, when you see that huge avalanche. Yeah. Oh, down. that would have been I think cool. that would have been phenomenal yes. in that kind of in that kind of setting. 3D or not. Well, I think the thing that I was most impressed with, now I only saw saw it in the standard theater. I didn't see it in uh, 3D or IMAX or anything, is that uh, I've watched Rise of Planet of the Apes recently in the past, I don't know, year or so. Mm -hmm. And it still holds up relatively well, but it doesn't hold up super well. Like the quality of the CGI, even a few years after that movie came out, Mm. is still so much better than it was when Rise of Planet of the Apes comes out. Now, that's really good CG. Oh, they yeah. They did a great job with with the, with the Caesar in the first one and uh, all the other apes as well. But the CG they got now, holy shit. Whoa. Uh, I agree with you on that. Uh, obviously, the evolution of the technology to make it more real and more... Uh, uh, you know, visceral, I guess, uh, has definitely developed in this movie. Um, unlike the other ones where I still felt what the what they were feeling or what Caesar was feeling when he was locked in a cage. You know, you felt that because the performances were so strong. And this, it was literally, I you almost, if you didn't know, you could swear they just literally took apes who mm-hmm. fucking knew how to talk mm-hmm. and put them on screen. And that blows my mind. That you can that that reality and fantasy while watching this, I couldn't separate it. Talking apes, kind of like people in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think one of the challenges. I think that one of the one of the challenges that uh, the first one faced, aside from the the technology aspect of it, was they actually had to to have Caesar kind of grow, like physically, because he came from just a young ape and actually had to evolve into his current state that we see him and even 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 in dawn and in this one so go ahead so go ahead. i mean he's he's got he's got a lot of growing up to do physically and then also just like as a character so i think that's part of like when you when on the, on that first one is really what it kind of made it a little bit more difficult andy circus can make the character work that man the, dude, this guy like we we mentioned, this man should get an award for at least one of these parts that he mm-hmm. does. No, the way he absolutely. you know does all this, I think part of the reason, like kind of like what Hobbit mentioned, like for Dawn, was um, no or Rise, excuse me, the first one, always whatever. Um, <laughs> they had to use more CG, and CG 
even in the few years since it's happened, has grown a lot as well. Oh, absolutely. So we see the quality more consistently through all the other movies. So yeah, the other one does look a little bit older, but they had to use more of it because he was a baby and smaller. It wasn't the body yeah. suit and stuff like right. that. Mm-hmm. So, right. uh, yeah, no, I completely agree. You know, the thing with uh, the thing with Caesar is that. And I, we brought this up in another podcast. What I love about these movies is it 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 puts a perspective on nature versus nurture, and that's an important mm-hmm. thing when you're talking about an ape. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and in the history of mankind, was Jane Goodall or you know there was a, I can't remember her name, but there was a lady who taught an ape how to do sign language, and that was a big thing in the late eighties. Yeah, all talking about with Coco. Is that was that one Coco? gorilla? Yes. Is that one more famous one? I think right. no, but, it was, uh, it was yeah. Amy, and she helped find the Amy. lost city of Zinj. No, shut up! You're talking about Congo, <laughs> okay. right. God damn not, it! And okay. that's not but Awful nature. Movie. But that's the important thing about you know a lot of this is depicting nature versus nurture. Now Caesar was grew up with humans, loving humans, people who cared about him, who took care of him, mm-hmm. showed him empathy and compassion. And then he was, you know, during that time, that's what he grew to know. He grew like a human. Mm-hmm. And and that's an important thing, you know, to show that ape or man, you know, nature and nurture, nurture almost seems to win out yeah, every one, time. One thing that this does carry on trope wise that comes from, you know, human based uh, movies where there's a, somebody that's basically touched to be in charge of a situation, uh, whether they want to be or not. Mm-hmm. And they rise to the occasion and become kind of the person that they need to be. Uh, kind of like in in uh, Pump Up the Volume, because I was like referencing that. Pump up like, the hey, volume. You're, you're, hey, you're, hey. you're waiting for the voice. Oh, no, you are the voice. Movie. You know, that's, that's right. kind of what Caesar was dealing with. But one thing that I loved that was so realistic about being in a position of power like that is that um, Caesar, one thing that he had in common with a lot of the presidents that we've had in the United States is that from the first movie to the last movie, he grayed like an American president. Like you look at yeah. like the yeah. first year president photo of any president that's ever been president. And then the last year where they're like, you look like you're about to die. Yeah. That yeah. was Caesar in the last movie where he was just like grizzled and like tired. He looks so tired. Well, you're and it, apes already have bags under their eyes. Like right. to start like at the beginning. <laughs> so it was you like, fucking look tired. And it was like, yeah. Exhibit was like, oh, you like bags on your eyes. I got put bags on top of bags on top of your eyes. Like at the beginning of the. Do that uh, again? No, I'm not. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Please, just that one was, more time. That was almost as gangster as the the uh, Comic Con. Yeah, we're not. The no, horror no, con. We're fine. Okay. We're fine. Uh, <laughs> no, I, who didn't my, I didn't raise my hand. Oh, okay. okay. But, um, well, but that also still goes back to what we were discussing about how well the effects have been. Um, where they can show where it was so subtle, but you could see. Again, the graying, even like the, the the wrinkles and creases in the skin, little, I mean, very little movement. Jesus, I don't know what that was. Um, it was Chucky. Uh, <laughs> um, but the effects are so much better. And and like what Kyle said, you really don't see where the line is of real and effects at this point at all. Uh, you know, and a lot of that, if you, if you, look at it in the perspective of the movie and the timeline obviously in the first when he first had his kid caesar uh and um you know in the sequel uh the it was a baby well it was a full-grown ape by this movie and had another one Mm -hmm. so we're talking you're talking me you know you might be talking a decade if not more so he's gonna possibly, age. yeah, because yeah. his yeah. oldest is basically an adult at this. Oh, point, because right? apes um, no, they, age close to the way humans they, age. They say it in the beginning when they're giving the intro, talking about mm-hmm. like you know using the rise and the dawn and mm-hmm. everything. They say it's it's been about fifteen years since the first movie. Right. So okay. so you imagine that like he's gonna gray, you know, because yeah. he was already a full grown adult. By oh, the yeah. end of the first one. But the stress level, bro. Oh, yeah. Well, the stress, I mean... of, the stress of being a leader is also going to weigh down on him, no doubt. Yeah. He's uh, busy trying to hide emails to Russia. You know, like, there's, <laughs> there's all this stuff happening. Well, then he sends his son out. He fucks up. And then and he's he got just to like, oh, him. you guys were looking for emails to Russia. He's like, put that fucking down. <laughs> No, but <laughs> what is it? Bright eyes or was it? Blue I just eyes keep thinking of the song. Uh, I keep thinking of the song. Uh, it wasn't me. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's bright eyes. I totally forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I got distracted. 
Mm. That's right. uh, I think he literally forgot. Oh, so. okay. no, right. okay. I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, one thing that I really liked about War of the Planet of the Apes that I don't think was really approached nearly as much in uh, maybe a little bit in uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, but not so much in Rise or in the original trilogy, is that you're rooting for the extinction of man. Oh, no shit. hell yes. Yeah, absolutely. Like, man are Men are dicks. It's the first right. movie where we're just like, go apes, kill humans. You know, that you don't get that. Even in, even when you can kind of understand where the apes are coming from in the second movie, mm-hmm. it's more of finding of coexistence between the two that you're really rooting for in the second movie. This one, it's just like, no, fucking kill them all. Yeah. Kill them fucking all. Yeah. Um, even though I, I don't agree with the humans at all in this movie, like I said, Woody Harrelson's performance and that speech he gives of why he is where he is, mm-hmm. uh, I, I, you really do understand. Like, mm-hmm. I do understand the villain in this. Like, mm-hmm. but they have to, But like, what what they do though is it was like literally like concentration camps. It was what they had. Oh, absolutely. And, and, you know, yeah. So, well, you know that had the uh, you know, and I'm sure that you know if you sat with Hitler long enough, you'd probably maybe somewhat see it through his point of view. Yeah, you know? exactly, and that's that's the you problem don't have with to that, agree. That it's so, you don't have to agree. No, no not, you don't. I'm not saying it's I'm not saying it's the same thing. But he's saying you could see it through his point of view. But his point of view was careful. His, right. <laughs> his point of view. What I'm was saying that, is that Hitler had some great ideas. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> no, you're saying Hitler, but Hitler was a was a political thing. Like this was a survival thing for the for a, for a whole species. No, no, no. I, I completely agree. And and what I'm saying with that is that. You know, if you if you really if if there's logic to it, and if you listen to to one of them long enough, you could see it through their point of view. Now, his point of view is very simple: uh, do this for the greater good. You know, like we talked about before, kill five hundred thousand to save one million. Uh, you know, and and that always seems to be like the default setting for humans. You know, whether in movies uh, or whatever the case might be, that's the depiction. And although I understood where he was coming from, at the end of the day, instead of coexisting and, and figuring it out, they just literally spent all their time killing each mm-hmm. other. No, but I, I thought that was more representative in the second one, actually. I thought Gary Oldman's portrayal of more about survival of the human race over anything else mm-hmm. was his main goal. You saw more of a humanity from that than you did from Woody Harrelson in this one. Woody Harrelson was all about protecting his own ass. Because there were humans that were wanting to kill him. <laughs> so That's true. A completely different perspective. I think Gary Oldman, you know, his whole idea, like initially it was just to get water. So human beings could have wa- water and still survive. Well, power. And using well, water. Yeah. Yeah. But um, that was his main goal from the start to the finish. And he really didn't even get violent in that movie till the very end. Thanks to Cobra. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Now, one thing that I really, really hit home in that conversation between uh, Caesar and uh, the uh, sergeant or the colonel, colonel, yeah, the colonel, Woody Harrelson's character, that I think the real story behind War for Planet of the Apes that is at this point, and it's definitely an an analogy to what we're dealing with with humankind currently, Mm. is that humans themselves in that conversation where he talked about killing his own son. Uh, yeah, they had yeah. humankind had lost its humanity and the dawn of the planet of the apes and moving forward. The dawn is very important there because they were starting to actually gain humanity. Uh, they were trying to understand mercy and trying to understand their place in the world, what, both with the environment around them and also the other species where man was busy killing everything that possibly threatened them. And the apes were really trying to find a way to coexist except for a couple of rogue ones or donkeys, you know, in, in this right. one, yeah. you know, which were, was an awesome idea. Brainwashed right? yeah. bitches. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, um, well, playing off kind of everything that's been said already, too, is where the... You have the, you have the, the ones that do want to work together, mm-hmm. and then you have, again, the from the second one, you have the, the Koba that is... I understand what you're saying, but fuck these dill holes. And he starts shit. It, it was actually it's weird to hear an ape say dill hole. That's uh, right. It's kind of weird. Well, yeah. or cornhole. It's, it's, it's like, why do you got to take it there, man? <laughs> He's just talking about a game for at parties. Oh, shut up. It, it, it's, <laughs> like, it's like when Bad Ape called Woody Harrelson a douche canoe. I was like, dude, that's just kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> douche but, canoe. <laughs> douche can- <laughs> so oh, I'm so using that for my boss. <laughs> oh. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, but you you did have and and you saw a 
uh, it was more so in the second one, and you you were kind of seeing starting to see that glimmer in the third one, until you know you realize who Woody Harrelson is, like how batshit fucking crazy he is. But you do for the most part have a mutual of like, hey, we can get along. I don't care if we stay in our own areas or do whatever. We just need this. We're trying to work together, and it's just one or two assholes on either side that love to fuck shit up. Yeah, one apple. Uh, you know, uh, you know, when it comes to the, the apes versus man and they reverse roles, right? So we're talking about where man had the virus, the, uh, simian flu, Mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, killed off a large population. Right. And then we're going to get into spoilers now, but it mutates. I mean, we've been in spoilers. Just in case somebody like happens to like walk in on this part somebody's listening Dude, that's to like, having, that's like having sex and mid-sex you're like by the way i'm inside you and they're like dude no i know like i was here the whole time <laughs> so i shouldn't say that anymore I wonder my wife looks at me weird anyways oh. <laughs> i don't think it's that <laughs> yeah, uh no but it's 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 a what was a really great uh storytelling tool was to switch it around was to show how man is de-evolving because of a virus, which which is ultimately what, if we don't do it to ourselves, would probably bring down any sentient being, which is a virus. Mm-hmm. Uh, to flip that flip that switch and give apes the emotional capacity, the sympathy, the empathy that humans would have, and then start taking it away from humans, and then showing like, well, what is it to be human, and is human even a thing? Is that is that just a construct, a human construct? Yeah. Well, and one thing I meant to mention before, too, is that if you look at it with what the virus is doing, it's all it's also about perception. Why is it de-evolution, de-evolutionizing someone just because it takes away vocal speech? Right. There are still many other ways of communication. But again, that's part of what made Woody Harrelson's character so fucking batshit crazy was that the way he saw it, it was it was a step down. And the whole point of their fight was to stop the gorillas and the apes and everybody so they could step back up to being on top. Uh, if you saw in the, and, and if you saw in the movie, that's a good point. But if you saw in the movie when it affected a human, it took away their ability to really process anything. They, they probably worked on primal uh, instinct, you know, your hard wiring. But the girls still Eat, communicated shit, sleep. And se- the girl and still communicated. She picked up the sign language she, talking with Maurice. She did, which brings into a whole nother level of, is it because it's a child and it's not as developed? Does that allow the virus to, to do less damage to their ability, their cognitive thought? The humanity aspect of this movie really kind of shown through with the language barrier stuff that was happening because... You look at the mankind side of it where everybody needs to speak the same language, period, to understand each other, which they didn't get into. Everybody spoke English, but they didn't know sign language. Uh, They didn't even get, like, winks of stuff to each other. The chimps and the the apes and everybody involved in this are, like, sign languaging, and they're, like, even being like, no, and they're like, okay, well, we know, like, eight things from that Yeah, it takes one little nod of a head. They, They know, they can communicate from, like, distances from each other on how to do stuff they're like somebody's looking in binoculars and he's like yeah 35 feet to the you know to this cell and 37 paces 37 paces and like they're they're doing straight up like fucking uh way more serious hogan's heroes situation here <laughs> Coco, Co- like coco was caesar and, before and the dude caesar. with the crossbow was like i see nothing until he's like no nah, sorry dude i gotta shoot you <laughs> Did you just german accent that shit <laughs> yeah. no but what i what i think was was, was showcased here was um the girl being able to learn sign language itself, I thought was great. Mm-hmm. Um, you did see, you know, when, when they found her, she already had blood coming out of her nose. So she already had at least some sort of a strain of it. Uh, we've been talking about, um, you know, the evolution of this virus. So maybe she has a different strain of it that the grownups are not, are not getting because they've already been exposed previously. It just hasn't fully developed in their system. Like they talked in the movie because Woody Harrelson's character, even at one point says like, we all have it. We know that we have it. It just, it's like the walking dead. Yeah. It yeah. just hasn't manifested mm-hmm. right. itself yet. Yeah. Um, so this little girl being only eight or nine years old, you know, she's been brought into a world where this virus is already existing 
And, you know, obviously they can't inoculate against it. They've tried. They've failed. Um, so it, it just shows that the new generation is adapting to it a little bit differently. Like the right. building an immunity. Yes. Yeah. To a point. Well, or it just re- it doesn't react as severe but still affects them. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. it's obviously going to damage cognitive thought, so it's going to damage the neural pathways, right? So it's not going to allow you to say, uh, I can use this to write, you know, because... To a point, they're not going to see that. They're going to do it in a more hardwired way to communicate. Now, in the original trilogy, and it's been a while since I've seen anything beyond uh, the first Planet of the Apes movie. Yeah, there's five. five. <clears throat> yeah, there's five. And also a, a series, five. a mini series, or a, a television series. There was a television show. There was even a cartoon, a cartoon series. Yeah. <clears throat> there there's was a, a bastardized movie. I think some fan yeah, made yet. that or something. Marky Mark know. was yeah. in it. Not yet. Yeah, we're not, we're not going to talk about I saw about Calvin that. Klein and... Feel it, we're feel not, it. We're but, not gonna. You know. We're not gonna. Does that have that the uh, Does that have the orangutan bathing in roses, rose petals? No that that one is like your your like twin that's up in the attic that you just hear bumping occasionally. And oh, talk about okay, like that's okay. that one. Yeah, yeah we yeah. just don't. We're not gonna. Uh, we're not gonna we, talk about that. We but, know he's there, but just let it go. And it got fed table scraps in the original yeah, series. Fun. How much was the virus involved with any of this? It, was wasn't, a a virus. Virus. it wasn't a virus. It wasn't a virus. It was it was space exploration that brought him into it. Yeah, well, they no, punched through. I know it was they punched through like space and time, time travel for, for time travel. Time and travel. But as far as the apes taking over. Uh, that was the hard sell in the original series or the original movies that there were these smart apes that were being like developed and then they just took over mankind. Uh, well, what it it was, it was a virus base or something happened, but it involved um, evolution of cats and dogs, not with the humans. And with that evolution of cats and dogs somehow went into the apes and gorillas and humans de-evolved. And everyone knows cats uh, or dogs are man's best friends. So they were like, well, we got to kill the dogs, too, because they're going to side with the humans. Cats and dogs and living together. Mass, mass hysteria. hysteria. Yeah, it's definitely. Second Ghostbusters It was reference. It was prophesized first. in Ghostbusters. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> the coming of the cats and dogs apocalypse. Yes. It was the first one. <laughs> it was the second one tonight. Oh, yeah. that's what he means. Oh, there was an outtake oh, where it's like cats and dogs. We're thinking somebody first movie. Somebody off camera was like, <laughs> and the apes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, but it was some weird evolution from some other animal that somehow affected the apes. Yeah. Right. But I thought, you know, there there were interesting kind of tie-ins to those originals. Sure, there were tie-ins. I mean, but obviously yeah. you had you had you had Nova yeah. was in the original. And Cornelius, you had the Cornelius. names. Sorry. <laughs> you had Cornelius. And then you also I think uh one of the one of the the, the, the biggest bleed overs that I really liked were the scarecrows. Um Especially in this this last one, where you know they they come up upon the camp, and you know you have the gorillas that are, they're sorry, the apes that are you know, crucified, are crucified, basically. yeah, yeah. Um, whereas like in the original movie, there was just really a scarecrow. Um, that was some fucking Game of Thrones shit. Yeah, yeah, dude. Fuck fucking, yeah. Like, yeah. Put them on them every mile marker. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> can, oh. I, can I? Can I? I want to. Give a little love to the to the uh, to the the way it was filmed, and I'm not just talking about the apes and how they looked great. That was awesome. Uh, it was it was the throwbacks to the originals uh, with the rides on the beach. You know that yeah, that, that, around the beach. Yeah. that yeah. sort of that sort of water kissed sand. You know where you just see the shimmer from the sunlight, and they're riding down the beach like. That there. How sexy did you feel as you said "water kissed sand"? Are you, <laughs> are, you are you planning on writing a travel blog? I is didn't know right? my dick could get I, wet, but I, it is. I almost expected like a, a Statue of Liberty head to be like sticking out. Of the ground. <laughs> yeah. You almost wish like in the background. That's exactly what's. But that right there was just a visual. They didn't have to say things. You know, they didn't have to give you some sort mm-hmm. of like. Here's an, a blatant throwback to the originals. Like they just said. Let me give you some just very basic imagery yeah. that'll take you back. And that's the yeah. first thing that came to my head was like, I remember the first fucking thing I remember is them riding on the beach, yeah. except for the Statue of Liberty was in the back, yeah. uh, which, you know, they answer that sort of riddle towards the end of the mm-hmm. movie, which well, we'll get to. They even talk about that when, when they're, or, or you kind of see that when they're traveling uh, to, to the, uh, to the, to the military camp. Because you have all like those, those barren lands that almost reminds you of those like rocky, Kind of quasi watery areas that they're that 
that Charlton Heston and his landing crew has to kind of cross over to to initially find the camp in the first one. Um, you know, when they're basically like, "Oh, you know, we're gonna head, we're gonna head west or whatever," but like, which way is west? And because the, the sun never sets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Get the fuck out, <laughs> dude. Seriously, so off my own podcast. Yeah, fucking. <laughs> is he combing his beard again? Yes. Yes. Dude, so you good. Barely have a beard. It's Hello. So good. Look, I gotta look. I gotta look, look as good as Cedar. He's That's literally it combing it. He looks like his uh, as if he's just petting himself. Like yeah, you look like so a cat who's good. like like bathing himself. It actually feels really good. Seriously? Like I'm not even mad about it. Oh go. yeah, that's solid. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can take care of that in in his sleep, right? Yeah, I expect if you do one if you do one bald patch, then you know you're good. I totally expected to see an ape in this movie, though, like doing something similar, like grooming themselves. There was nobody like grooming, general nobody. grooming. No, nobody no. was grooming you know shit because except for Woody Harrelson. Like, he was shaving himself. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, that bothered me. Okay, I the, love that scene. No, that's fucking. Bu- that's some fucking intimidation bullshit. God damn right. That's some Gestapo. That, did, are you telling me that he didn't have enough time? Is that what it is? Like he's just got such a fucking busy schedule, like up in that fucking roost that he has, uh, that he can't shave with a fucking <laughs> Bowie knife. Like I'm sorry, it I wasn't know, a Bowie knife. It was, it was a, a straight razor. razor. He had a straight, a straight razor. razor. Number one. It wasn't like it done. Was it was a yes, it was yeah. a straight razor. Yeah. Anybody catch it? It was a straight was, razor. It wasn't a Dundee knife. It's not like crocodile. Oh, then be going, oh, I might. No, yeah. it's, it's basically like a single blade barber's razor is what he was. Oh, yeah. that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but see, like he was missing the one hey. patch on the back of his neck, Look, dude. There was like an obvious. He's a smart guy. He takes his time with shit. He's not going to fucking force a razor across and his head. And it's not like he's, he's working gonna with a look whole lot his, of hair anyways. Right. Yeah. He's going to look at his peeps. He's going to be like, see this? I'm getting pretty for you. But no, that fuck you. You're in the mountains. You need as much <laughs> hair as possible. Like is you're worried, not bald, sir. You don't. Is he know. worried about all the lady troopers that he has to impress? Maybe. Like, what is? It, no. uh, are the troops going to be like? Well, I don't know. He's got a shoehorn for hair. I don't think I, we can follow him. Like, no. Why we don't are you follow Kyle? Your head? When your hair doesn't grow in all the way. That's a different thing. That's, <laughs> that's not sure. That's you don't sure. want head stubble. It's not the same as face stubble, okay? That's it's true. It's fucking annoying. Yeah, it's annoying for like a week, and then you're fine. Then he's just going to look he's like... He's going to look like Krusty the Clown. No, you can't take him he's seriously. He's going to look like a more fit George Costanza, and it'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> you no. can't take him seriously no. as the colonel, oh, and he looks if, like he's going to be like, what? Imagine if George Costanza was <laughs> yeah. out there being like, hey, troops, yeah. and they're like, fuck <laughs> off. You fucking you know? killed the apes already over here. <laughs> Jerry, now you get Sound, the fuck yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> the apes are coming. It's like the the different worlds of George are colliding together. He's, he's more worried about the eclair in the trash can than the apes. <laughs> he's dusting the fur off of it. Yeah. Jesus get Christ. your hands off my eclair, you damn dirty, dirty ape. <laughs> and that's the name of the episode. I was about right. to say that's the episode right there. Yeah, speaking of which, uh, we're right at the break, so we're uh, gonna we're gonna take oh, a breather shit, here for just broken. a minute. We're gonna refocus. Yeah, we're gonna refocus. Uh, the first half we talked at length about the new movie, but we're gonna get into some of the movies of this trilogy and really dive into the original trilogy's trilogy as well on the second half, as well as what we're drinking. It's not a trilogy. Oh no, I'm sorry. The original series of movies. The, the there you go. Yes. What is it? Okay. A pentology? If it's five. Let's not even try. I'm, I'm not worried about that. Why would we just, just call it? Why would we just call it an anthology if we're going to call yeah, it anything? Planet of the Apes or, or that's better, they're... Planet of the Apes and its sequels. Yeah, because that, that's, that's, that's that. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's about better. right. So thank that's you guys for listening yes. for the first half. Second half, of course, also spoiler heavy and uh, definitely off the rails. Stick around after a word from our friends of the show. <laughs> Thank you for watching the GUI podcast. This is Nick from Instant Replay Live. I get plugged here a lot, and I'm being allowed to do it myself this time. Uh, I, I'm going to plug myself as much as I can. You can check out our Twitter at INST Replay Live. I'm going to plug myself again. I'm plugging myself in front of all these guys right here. You can find us on YouTube if you search for Instant Replay Live or YouTube.com slash C slash Instant Replay Live or at InstantReplayLive.com. We do video games. We do tabletop role-playing games, and we do re- reviews and all kinds of other stuff. So check us out. Totsky from the YMM Podcast, big fans of the Geeks Under the Influence. Talk about all the same shit, so definitely check us out, ymmpodcast.com. This is Mike the Hobbit, direct from Fallout on a trivia night, telling you to come here every first and third Monday for trivia between 8 and 10, 25 cent wings, drink specials, prizes, and tons of really inappropriate trivia. It's a lot of fun. Do you guys agree? Definitely come out and enjoy trivia every first and third Monday at Fallout.
In addition to Fallout, Geeks Under the Influence takes over Wonderland on the corner of 18th and Main Street for Geeks Under the Influence trivia, ridiculous trivia, goofy music, great food, cheap drinks, 1727 East Main. Come and check us out, 8 to 10, every second and fourth Tuesday. Welcome back to the second half of Geeks <laughs> Under the Influence, our All Things Planet of the Apes episode, uh, mainly focusing on War of the Planet of the Apes. We were talking about uh, all the part of the original, or the, the new trilogy and also the original series of Yay. movies, uh, the Planet of the Apes and its sequels, as we decided to call it on the first half. I'm uh, Before we continue on with anything else... I think it's important that we talk about what we're under the influence of. Uh, we're going to talk about what we are drinking. Ooh. Hey, we're fucking drinking. We're getting drunk. You want to know? Well, here you go. Hey. Uh, where is Rogue? Oregon, I think it is. I'm not sure. That damn West Coast shit. Oregon brewed. Yep. Northwest so, Coast. <laughs> this is the Rogue Voodoo Donut Grape Gorilla. So, Grape Ape. Um, grape, definitely grape, sweet. Grape, it's an grape. ale brewed with natural flavors. And uh, what, what's the stuff on the status? On Tastes this? like alcoholic cough syrup. This is foul. I'm Dude, not is digging this that. Diamond tap. I'm not digging that. Of, it's a little bit lighter than cough syrup, but uh, that that grapey flavor I think maybe needs to stay at a booze for the most part. Yeah, it's like it's like, so it's like, what, it's like someone dr- it's like drinking a beer and sucking on a like fucking blow. I pop. think I could drink it. The, the reason I got it is exactly. that uh, I don't know if the the camera is gonna let me put it up to the other camera. Don't um, buy that. <laughs> yes. This Run is, away! It's Run got, away! It's got a gorilla gorilla. It's a gorilla with like a bone necklace with a skull, and it's got like a little star beret on it, and he's like going nuts. And that seemed perfect for War of Planet of the Apes. I mean, so yeah. he's a colonel. The the oh, image is dude, good. This is foul. Just, it's, yeah. I feel like this is what I could feed my kid to put him to sleep. Oh. Wow, you feed or so just do you, do as you a general punishment, just like feed it to him. And oh, drink? that was so bad. What this, talking about the, the older one? This that, does yeah. remind me of something. Uh-huh. I don't know, freeze it, just keep it cold. The grape, uh, you remember the little barrels, the juice barrels? Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, those oh. are better than this. <laughs> those are so gross, though. They have like the full top, and yeah, or like if you got one of those better little, than this. the little <laughs> icy squeezy things, uh, but the, like a grape flavor of it, where it's like all melted and it's, not. It's like frozen. trying to make yeah. grape Kool Aid, but you only had two scoops of sugar, like instead of like you know twelve. Grape, grape big right? league, <laughs> grape big league chew is better. I'm than sorry, this. I tried to give that yes. benefit of the, of the doubt, but that's just. That's, that's not, that's not good. good, man. It's not good. Hey, sorry. We haven't had a doozy in a while, so we're do, we were do one. Do we have? Do we have like we're do a doozy? <laughs> we were do a doozy. Do do. It's a do- like the- It's a doozy. Oh, a doozy. That's, yeah, that's I, rough. I finished it and I was like, nope, it's just not. Nope. Yeah, I I took a couple sips and I just I gulped it down just to finish my glass to be a big boy and. Why did they make yeah. it look like Pepto Bismol? <laughs> <laughs> because it tastes like medicine. I'm seriously, yeah. like I'm, 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 I'm scared to even blend what I brought with this because it might affect it. Nah, I'd be all right. Here's the yeah. thing, Rogue. I don't know. Rogue is known uh, for oh, Rogue Dead Guy. Rogue Dead Guy is like their their go to yes. beer. No, Rogue for the makes most part. some really good. And stuff. they do Bastard Ale too, right? No, no, that's, that's uh, Stone. 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 Oh, yes. okay, okay, sorry. Uh, that gets confused by a lot of people actually. But Rogue Dead Guy is actually aged in uh, the Rogue Bourbon barrels. Uh, it's a it's a style of bourbon, uh, or Dead Guy Bourbon barrels, I think it is. And yeah. uh, and Rogue ages it it's a pretty good beer i mean it's decent it's yeah. been around forever yeah, I was about to i've say had it a couple the... episodes ago yeah, yeah and it's been in, it's in like every store yeah you know, i was about to say i've that, had no rogue stuff before and but this one i i don't know if they just were feeling saucy in the pants or what but they it's... have like a brown hazelnut uh beer that's pretty good too yeah but yeah. this is just called the i want to know bomber. like yeah he said like were they just feeling saucy who the fuck said that was a good idea yeah like <laughs> Who the, said that this the, was okay the to release? The brewer's girlfriend. So this right? is like, I'll, and, I'll, and also a pink bottle. If you could do like a pink bottle, that'd be really Don't cool you mean too. the main brewer's daughter, who's Duh. like six? It was like, tastes and good, he's Dad. He's feeding her alcohol, yeah. That's right. great. I mean, but like the, the drawing <laughs> yeah. looks okay. I slept really good last night, Dad. No, the artwork is awesome. It's a great bottle. Yeah. I, I don't even mind that it's pink. Like, I think the pink makes it kind of fun. You know? Yeah, but, yeah. but that it's, inside it me, is it, just... It really makes me want some Pepto, though. It, it, it does. It's At just 7.2% alcohol by volume, uh, that shit should be something else. It's just like my uh, in my uh, friendships and relationships that I look for is that... Uh, 
you can be pretty on the outside, but if you're not pretty on the inside, <laughs> then I'd want nothing to do with you. You have it. You should have seen focus. her head turn <laughs> and, real quick. Darling, you are both, obviously. So, um, no, which, as soon as you said relationships, she was like, <laughs> yeah, her head knocked up. By the way, my girlfriend is off camera currently. Um, we are celebrating our one year anniversary tomorrow. And, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. Just, under hours, yes, yes, just under so. two hours, sir. Yes. Just under two hours. So I better not get say, your shit together. I got to say, I, I got to gotta make it to one year at least. So like I cannot fuck this up and it would happen during the episode. If well, then you should have heeded my advice earlier and get the fuck out. If you need to, you <laughs> could break up with him tomorrow. Just last the two hours. <laughs> so he meets his goal. <laughs> or there's a chance that uh, possibly the first time in podcast history. Somebody doesn't make their one year anniversary right before their one year, year anniversary and it's recorded. Ooh. Ooh. Got that shit on video. Uh, yeah. It sounds like a Saturday Night Live skit going on. The sad part is I'm going to have to write up that article on GUIPodcast.com about my own breakup, and that's going to be fucking <laughs> <Yeah>. terrible. <laughs> you're you're trying to record shit within recording shit mom. within Fix recording your shit. What, you're a bitch. You want me to pour your shit for you? Yes, pour my shit for me. Or you can fling his shit like a ape. Go. There you go. All right. Now uh, you're talking. Mr. Dan, which Dan the man, Danimal, uh, brought something that is most likely going to be better than what we just tried. Yeah, unfortunately, I've got to mix it in the same glass, but I'll yeah. try. Oh. Yeah, we it might, it might with ruin it. it just a little bit. It's like drinking grape so, urine. So uh, before you pass it along to the other table, um, what what are we sipping on this evening? We are sipping on a, uh, a recent release from Hardywood. Uh, support local. It's Hardywood Mima's Mean Cobbler. Now this is a uh, a branch off from their Peach Triple. If you can see okay. this, what the? I'm really excited about this because uh, I love their Peach Triple. So okay. mother. Of but it's also God. in addition to that. Now I, I will say this: like, I, there's a reason why I let this sit a little bit. I'll, my, it's, my. it's coming over. My, Relax, my. Um, <laughs> sir. But in addition, I in, all right, so it's a it's a delightful variation. Of our peach triple with <laughs> vanilla, cinnamon, coconut, and milk hey, sugar additions. I'm gonna admit delivering it. the classic flavors of a southern style peach cobbler, baked fresh in grandma's kitchen. Can we men at work this shit and totally golf clap it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, this and is. Don't forget to sing that oh, you're from Ananda Nanda. Uh, I'm the gonna. Peach triple is amazing. So <laughs> try to avoid it. Actually making it over to the other table. Um, oh, this fuck is... you. <laughs> Fucking phenomenal. Thank you, Katie, for passing that over to the other All table. Right, so far, we've gone without your a gentle range, lady and a scholar. And you're about to start it now by threatening that. Holy hell, this is really good. It's it's the the peach, but it's got a little bit of cinnamon to it, so it's got that cobblery kind mm. of. But approach. it's not it's not overly peachy. Mm. Okay, it's, I will say that much. Is right that now. a limited oh, release? The, the cinnamon is very potent on it, just smelling it. It's really good. Holy shit, this might be one of my new favorite Hardy Woods. Oh, minute. give me the fucking bottle. I'm not sure if I'm having this. A sh- this honestly, like I, I taste oh. more cobbler than I do peach. It's, I'm not sure. Oh, it's, I think it's I'm even got a... like the flavor of like like the crust that just yeah. melts in your mouth. And like, a oh bit. yeah. yeah. This is where I know I, I think I'm having a stroke because I actually smell French uh, toast. Uh, something's oh, well, wrong with we we very French. <laughs> and of course, in Hardywood style, it's an eight point two alcohol. Yeah, so it is a nice dick kicker. It no, it's a it's a uh, dick adjacent kicker. Um, well, no, like it's true. It, true. It got close to the dick. It maybe kicked the inner thigh, but it, it didn't. It jiggled it didn't, the balls a little it's bit. It's more like a cup check. It's a cup check. There you go. Yeah, there it's you a go. cup. Good. Yeah. No, I like that. I like That's that. It's good. a cup because, check. Yeah, because in comparison to some other Hardywood brewers that I've brought in in the past, we've been upwards of like thirteen percent. And oh, everybody yeah, is straight yeah. up, like, He's if they like, weren't drunk already, we're getting drunk off of, like, like, they're, uh, like, two ounces worth of stuff. Their bourbon crew they have is, like, 13%. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. It's, like, it's 13%. It's really, really good. good. But have, shit. You got, um, you either either share it or you better space that shit no, out. Have or you, be have sitting you, when have you drink s- it. Have oh, you yeah. tried, yeah. Yeah. No, have you tried their you collaboration that they have with New Belgium? No. Uh, I think it's Savor X, and that, I mean, it's good. Like, similar to the bourbon crew. 
Um, but it is, it's, yeah, it's potent. So you just came in your pants of it, or I at least this, it looked like I that. I love this so fucking much. It's so good. You were dangerously close to, to an to okay. Honest, this actually makes the whole rogue, uh, oh, rogue voodoo well, donut What, what are you situation? talking about? We don't even know what that other drink that, is. That's going up there with the Tim Burton Planet of yeah. the Apes. It's going up in the attic. We're not talking about it for the rest of the episode. Done. That's Done. what you want to take to, uh, to <laughs> give you a stomach ache. And then you got to take Pepto-Bismol to correct right, it. So voodoo donut is, uh, Tim Burton Planet of the Apes. And this is <laughs> war for Planet of the Apes. <laughs> Right here. This yes. is yes. Oh, right yeah. there. This is, uh, Cheers. Thank you. Dude, Cheers. not, not only you. for Hardywood being East Coast local and Virginia, just, I mean, a peach collar, like a southern beer. Perfect summer drink right here as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Oh my God. It's not a stifling summer. And like either. I said, I, yeah. I, I honestly think this one. Because I, I could have left it ice cold. I've, I've tried it ice cold. It's, it's phenomenal. But I think after it sits for just a little bit, it, it yeah, really it's not that help. freezing it, it, cold, correct. but it's, it, it's it kicks it's, it up just a little slightly bit of a chilled. Notch. It tastes like that pie you put in the microwave just long enough, so when you put the whipped cream on it, it melts a little bit. Speaking Ooh, of this, ooh. Cool Whip would be great. This could yeah. be cool. like I would whip Cool Whip if it wasn't like eight and, and some percent. I could see sessioning this because it's but so no. easily yeah. drinkable, but, but no, but not on the no. percentage. But this also as a dessert beer would be yes. absolutely. Oh, I mean, oh, this would yes. be wonderful for just like. Actually, with like a, even doesn't even have mm. to be a peach cobbler, but like another like a piece of pie. No, I, I think that'd be too no. much. Me, I'm Actually, thinking like a I'm thinking like some fried chicken and some mashed potatoes and drink this. <laughs> I'm thinking I, I want Afterwards. some ice cream, like an ice cream float, is what I'm thinking. What an awesome! What if we have? We'll have another podcast where it's just us with with alcohol that goes great with certain types of food. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> this goes good with soul food. I'm, I'm going sure soul food here. That would be the perfect episode to cross over a couple of our new podcasts that'll be coming out. If yes. you do the yeah. good, the perfect. bad, yep. if you do the good, the bad, and the hungry with tales from the bar side as a crossover, that would be the perfect nice. thing to do. The two on stone kind of deal. Right. Yeah, and we'll yeah. get we'll get the you know the the common core and. Get them together, and Absolutely. we'll have them eat our faces off while we drink. There we go. I hey. think that's a beautiful idea. Was it bad? Okay yeah, it's drunk. Face. Food and booze and podcasting. Too. I mean, really, what what more do you need? All right, so uh, th those are the uh, those are the shares. I'm uh, drinking right. on a classic myself. Stepping uh, it up. I'm stepping it up a little bit. Um, not not by a lot. Hey, uh, I think I think no, that's I, miles above. Uh, they went back with their old recipe, and it's fantastic. We've talked about it a lot. Schlitz. If uh, everybody jokes on Schlitz because that's that like classic '80s bullshit. It's the PBR of the '80s, basically. Well, yeah. even '70s, well, really. No, I mean, but, but well, no. Uh, what is it? Mm. Um, no, yeah, but, no. Okay, no, little '70s. Bit. I think Does it go really that far back? On their yeah. yeah. Liquor, wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Beer. Yeah, they shit on the Blue Bull. Yeah, Blue Bull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do but, they have slits and I don't blame them for that because that's gross. This is very affordable uh, domestic lager. It's not doing anything special, but it's got a little bit more malt than you're going to get with a standard like bullshit like cheap beer. But it's still a great beer. It's a great beer. Oh, yeah, and it is. You're talking about like maybe 11, 12 bucks a 12 pack. I mean, it's not it's not overly expensive. Um, they had us to a bachelor party. Yeah, it's. It's a very sessionable, very easy drink in a uh, little bit of change of pace from PBR or high life for me. Um, 12 pack of just like drink it till you till you love it kind of beer. So, you know, drink it till you like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you're too drunk to care. <laughs> no, this is the beer that you buy a bottle of that Hardywood peach cobbler and you drink like half of that and then you just move on to the schlitz after because at that point because you're not, you, you don't even know if you're drinking a you're, full beer at that you're point you're not properly appreciating the notes at that point <laughs> right. so you're all, all your, ta your taste buds are drunk yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. honestly <laughs> Uh, Dan, which, what are you drinking on besides the uh, that fantastic fucking brew? <laughs> so aside from that, I am drinking the uh, the People's Beer of Rich of Richmond, the uh, the PBR, the for aforementioned PBR. Which, interestingly enough, I, I just read an article the other day where they they had um, there are a few different uh, brewmasters and everything that that they brought together, and there's about fifteen or sixteen different beers that they tried out. They're all your low end, your your Bud Lights, your Coors Light, your traditional yep. cores, all that sort of stuff, and they P were water. ranking. They were ranking all the different ones, and basically on like a five point scale. Um, as expected, something like Budweiser and Bud Light scored very low. Um, PBR, as they should. exactly as they should. PBR was actually tied for first <laughs> um, oh overall. So as far as like a a cheap uh, light, you know, just kind of basic beer, it is. One of the, kind of one of the best ones out there, even as far as to like craft beer, basic brews. bro or basic bitch. 
It's for yeah. everybody. I was about to say, uh, you're, you're kind of overselling yeah. PBR at this point. Yeah. Uh, maybe. <laughs> no, I, I don't even know if that's possible because it is delicious. All right, we don't right. Gotta, uh, Scotty, what are you drinking? Everyone that's listening know. knows PBR. So and that's my point. Yeah. But no. Um, I actually found this is a new one for at least me is um, Summer Love Ale Ooh. by uh, Victory Brewing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's a good summer drink. I don't mind it. Um, Victory apparently is from a little place in Pennsylvania. They really didn't. I really didn't see any specific city. Um, I thought it said Philly. It should be. Was on it the Philly? Bottle. I think it says it's Philly on the bottle. On the bottle. <laughs> so look on the bottle if you want to know if it's actually from Philly or not. There we go. There we go. Um, but it, it. I mean, this is like a five point two or something. So yeah. again, a good like just summer drink. It's been doing fine, and it's a good. Man. Add her because I definitely I wish I could finish that bottle of Hardywood, but um I'd I'd be fucked. Yeah. Summer so. loving. No, you Sorry. would you wouldn't be uh, fucked because you would pass out on the couch and then no one Well, would no, then my wife would probably divorce me and I I'd yeah. be fucked at yeah. that point. Okay. That's what I'm meaning. I'm I mean I'm talking end so game hot. here. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, Kyle, touch a hoppy. What are you drinking? Uh I am <laughs> I'm sw- I'm switch hitting. So I originally was drinking. The, I've heard uh, that about you, right? <laughs> oh, you start. Um, I was uh, <laughs> I was originally uh, drinking the Vienna Lager, and then um, moved over to the. Uh, how do you pronounce it again? Line and Kugel. Kugels. Fucking it. Philly. They're illiterate too. Love yeah. it. Uh, orange <laughs> shandy, um, and uh, it's delicious. So I re- at this point in time, I'm just I'm just drinking both. Okay. The uh, the summer shandy or the orange shandy is absolutely fucking delicious. Yeah, it is. It yeah. is probably the best one I've had. Period. That's probably my favorite out of the the shandies that Line and Kugel does. I do, I do, yes, and I do love the shandies. Yeah. I didn't till recently, but now I've become a advocate for them. All right, what's the other one that you're doing? The Vienna Lager. Okay, the so the thing you drink every single time. God you're on damn the right. right. You see that or Yingling? And you know dude, what? That's yeah. thing. Anybody uh, tell me why I shouldn't. Anybody? No, I mean I love that beer. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I, that was more for the people out there oh, listening. Okay. Yeah, you all know. All right, so uh, you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I got Dan's share. I had Hobbit's disgusting that he's drinking. What the fuck, dude? Don't judge me. This shit's don't disgusting. Don't replace the deliciousness. My my mama told me growing up that if you don't clean your plate, you don't get dessert. And I want well, some of that what? fucking peach cobbler. If you throw yeah, up, I think it's that gone. Belongs, you it's gone. That belongs, belongs in the toilet. Just if I drink this it. bottle, then I'm going to come over and manifest destiny or fucking glass over there. I mean, you can try. You mean his cock? But she will take you to the, she'll be taking you to the hospital later. I mean, you can try. Come on. You can have his come glass. Why? Because I'm going to start cold, dead like fingers. dry heaving from the amount of this beer that I drink? No, because I'm going to break you. It's because he's, he's going to profess his love yeah, to you <laughs> is what's going to happen. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> Soft and violence weak. aside, um, I am drinking the, I am drinking a, a mix of the Lana Kugel's uh, Grapefruit Shandy. Um, and I am also drinking an East Coast local beer from uh, what the fuck's name is Forest. Up? Forest. They're, is, well, they're out of forest, but it's called uh, Golden Sensor. It's out of Honey a, Wheat Ale. Is that Apocalypse Ale Works? Apocalypse Ale Works. Yeah. Uh, the, forest is just outside of Lynchburg, um, right. Jerry, Jerry Falwell country. Yeah. Yeah. So. No wonder they drank out there. Yeah. yeah. But, but he did. That's how they get the message across. Every time you take a sip of that, I want to throw up, dude. I'm sorry. The uh, the great ape, Jerry Falwell. Yeah, he keeps or drinking he drink? the great ape, and it makes oh, me yeah. throw up. It's making me nauseous. Why do you do the things that you do, I'm, Hobbit? God damn it! I'm dead you know inside. It doesn't matter. The rest of this, uh, Is there more? There's a little bit left. So you are you telling me? It. Are you? Oh. Oh. Dude, you're like wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's that bad, dude. It's that bad. Yeah. Do you need your glass rinsed out? Okay, with a for a little bit of PBR first. Uh, uh. Hey, if you're gonna spew, <laughs> spew into this. <laughs> <laughs> for for our audio listeners, I had a little bit of the uh, grape ape, the road. No, you take a, a dude, you took a big took old load in the mouth. Old and I, shot to the I face. took a big old chug of that to make room for this beautiful. You fucking took that shit like Jenna Jameson over man. there. There you, go. there you go. All that for that. There yeah, you dude. Go. Just the yeah. Tip. Hobbit, remember to open your throat. <laughs> it's going to taste like a little bit like grape ape, too. Less, what but you, you do is you, you, you tilt your head back. All right. All right. Yeah, so. <laughs> Hobbit's all fucked up. Did you finish it? Is it finished? Is it gone? Yeah. No. No, it's not even close it to finish gone. It. I'm saying, finish it. Finish it. That's no, like. I'm, 
okay. If you right. gave that to someone who was homeless <laughs> on the street, they'd probably punch you. All right, so we're you. moving on to our next part of uh, the podcast here. I want to actually be able to enjoy oh, this peach cobbler action that's happening. So uh, we're what? I'm sorry, Scotty. We're, yes, we're off the rails. We. We're all-, <laughs> <laughs> all right, come on. So that's like being in the ocean and being like, "Hey guys, we're wet." Yeah, no shit. <laughs> we're on the second half of the fucking podcast. I'm a little I, wet I just right like now. Right. Is that okay? All right. So uh, next part up is uh, making a drunken scene. Uh, which, which obviously we're going to be doing all things uh, in this series of all the Planet of the Apes movies. So uh, the music, please. Making a drunken scene. All right. So first up is, of course, the classic uh, Planet of the Apes starring one Charlton Heston. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I looked at uh, some dialogue to try to get that damn dirty apes line in there, but... There's not enough dialogue there to really make no, it work. No, there's a, there's a lot of pauses and gaps around yeah, that scene. It yeah, it just doesn't it's... really work. So th- this is uh, also an important scene in that movie. So uh, Which... first up, we've got a scene from Planet of the Apes where we've got George Taylor, uh, Heston's character. Who's playing George in this one? That'd be me. That's Danwich. Um, Dr. Zira. Do we have a Dr. Zira on that one? Oh. I, I can mean... knock that one out. Okay. All right. Uh, Lowdown's going to do that one. Uh, we've got... Dr. Zayas. I got it. Scotty's got yeah, that one. Does. And Cornelius. Do we have a Cornelius? I'll do a Cornelius. Uh, all right. <laughs> forget to do the peace, peace <laughs> love, and soul afterwards. Yeah. All right. And uh, whenever George Taylor or uh, Heston's character wants to start. All right. So I'm going to be doing this in my uh, current best version of Walken. Okay. So... Oh, Jesus. This is going to take a while. <laughs> it's not going to be that bad. Walking slow. Right. That is your mystery of science. Honor bound to expand the frontiers of knowledge. Taylor, please. <laughs> <laughs> Except that he's also chief defender of the faith. There is no contradiction between faith and science. True science! Are you willing to put that statement to the test? Taylor, I would much rather... Take it easy. You saved me from the fanatic. Maybe I can return the favor? All right. Uh, We turned this into a uh, (laughs) fucking Quentin Tarantino movie, apparently. (laughs) (laughs) There's nothing wrong with that. (laughs) No, fair, fair. Uh, next one up is the uh, the first in the new trilogy of Apes movies from 2011, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. This is much more, like, people-centric out of this trilogy. Uh, yeah. And we've got a scene with uh, Dodge Landon. Do we have anybody doing that line? I'll do Dodge. Scotty. Anyone? Scotty Anyone? P. Anyone? Yeah. Caesar. Yes. That is uh, Kyle Smash will be Caesar. I'm going to try to do the Smeagol. It's uh, probably gonna oh, fail. don't just don't. If yeah, all right, do I'll it, do an do ape. It. I'll just do an ape. Do we have a Rodney in the in the audience? Do we have a Rodney? I I can do Rodney. I'll do Rodney. You do him hard. You do that, Rodney. <laughs> do we do we have a Buck? I, I'll be Buck. Okay. Uh, Dan's gonna be Buck. <laughs> uh, and uh, Caesar, we already got uh, Buck. Caesar, Dodge. Uh, that's okay, it. That's We're it. good. Okay. Cool. And um, I'm also gonna be gasping. very plainly <laughs> reading the 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 descriptive lines uh, between the dialogue. So I'm going to narrate. I'm going to narrate, <coughs> yes. So here we go. Uh, Planet of the Apes from 2011, starting with Dodge Landon. Me, 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 me. <laughs> <laughs> really? Hush now. Take your stinking paws off me, you damn dirty ape. That's pretty rough. I do it better. Okay. That's pretty rough. Yeah. I wasn't trying to be soulful and shit. I was just trying to do something different. You're trying to be white. I get it. He was yeah. Trying, he was trying to Sinatra the situation. Mm. That's fine. <sighs> no. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> wait, no, wait. That's somebody else's line. That suck, yeah. <laughs> Caesar. Right. All right, well, we've done it, so. Okay. Uh, Rodney looks at Caesar while he pulls the trink gun back and softly. Oh, my God. Looks at Caesar softly. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Grunson looks at the other apes who are screeching. 
No! Buck. <laughs> no! Jumps and walks along the cage. No! 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 You missed one. one. one you missed one. one. No. There we go. There it is. Oh, my God. Dodge. Uh. Rodney. <gasps> that, w- <laughs> that was that was interesting. Right. That was intense. <laughs> That's how apes communicate, apparently. And so I, I felt it was necessary. At least we didn't throw poo to the people watching. Yeah, no, that is true. <laughs> That's for next time. It's never too late. Yeah, <laughs> we're we're moving on to smell a vision and GUI here in the near future. So uh, scratch and sniff, <laughs> scratch and sniff GUI. Uh, um, oh, scratch and sniff iPad. Now the next one is actually from the new movie from uh, War for Planet of the, Planet of the Apes. Um, we've got a scene between. Uh, yeah, my favorite scene, really. Yes, great scene. Yes. From yes. this Seems amazing. Okay. Between right. the Colonel and Caesar. So do we have the Colonel on this one? It's and me. Right. Okay, that's, Jesus. that's low down. Jesus. And Jesus. Over don't ruin Caesar. It. That is Kyle Smash. And that's that's it. And that's it. And I, I'll read pause here and there um, as the narrator. So here we go. Have you finally come to save your apes? <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> what the fuck is that? All right. Sorry. <laughs> I came for you. For me. Pause. <laughs> Bloody hell. Look at your eyes. Almost human. Pause. <laughs> How'd you know I was here? I was told you were coming. That more soldiers from the north will be joining you here. Joining me here? To finish us off. For good. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> Who told you that? Pause. Okay, let's go. All right, end scene. All right, we're out of that fucking shit. Wow. All right, I'm uh, fuck that. Yeah, dude. All right. Yeah. Hey, this is all. That was all your idea from the beginning. So yeah, well, no, drunken scene is normally good, but with Planet of the Apes, one of the things, and this actually carries over into actually talking about this now. What I loved about like the new trilogy of Planet of the Apes is that so much of the intensity of the films is not dialogue driven. Right, Very it's true. all yeah. it's all actor driven. Where there's totally there's, emoticon. There's looks. There's hints. There's sign language. There's all sorts of other stuff. There's action that really develops the the storyline. The dialogue is almost kind of filling in the gaps. The the action, the movements, the the sign language, the nods, the winks. That's really the story. Well, and again, it goes back to in the beginning where we were talking about with the 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 effects and everything as well. How you you can see the emotions you can see the reactions to everything um one of my favorites again was um because you don't always get it in your just typical like say action drama or something the little girl when they first bust into the house or whatever and whether it's cg or not anything like that just the way her her pupils dilated little details that you just really you don't have to say anything you just see the reaction and yeah. see how people go with what's going on. Uh, there was a lot of care taken in how emotion is portrayed in this film. And a huge part of that is Dobby, the house ape. Uh, he <laughs> came oh out God. of the gate. He was the, he was like, you know, new kid on the block. Like I've been alone for a while. Holy fuck. I've got friends. Like I will totally be beside you forever. Like you helped me. You saved me. He just wanted somebody to appreciate his he, fucking wardrobe. That's, you know what? That's right. Called that's down true. Like, yeah. That's he true. was, you know, he was he dressed, dressed well. Yeah. He had, you know, he had the hood. He had the whole fucking get up going on. Uh, but as far as emotion is conveyed in this movie, there's two people or I should say two digitized people would be Caesar <laughs> and fucking uh, Dobby the house ape or as they know him bad, bad ape. ape yeah uh, because the emotions conveyed in him they were so subtle but if you really look at the eyes the mouth the way the creases were I I can't imagine sitting in front of yeah. a computer screen creating that no but I actually think that uh, another one that you could add to that list would be uh, the albino um, winter the albino, winter mm-hmm. the albino yeah winter. like after traitor he, after after well after he had already betrayed them and had been tattooed i guess you could say with donkey and when the rest of the apes confront him but it's because you i mean you see actual fear yeah especially like yeah. after after he realizes that because of what he did 
Caesar lost his wife, and Caesar lost his son, his oldest son, um, specifically because of what he did. And, like, the emotion that's involved with that is just, it's uncanny. This is something that maybe maybe I picked up on, and maybe I'm reading into it, or maybe the intention of the director, but if you look at the donkeys, as they were known in War of Planet of the Apes, uh, they were almost all gorillas. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. 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 Even yeah. even the yeah. turncoat, Winter, was a, a, a gray gorilla. Right. Um, much like the ones that you'd find in Zinge uh, from Congo, which I'm assuming is a prequel Shut to War of Planet of the God damn it. But... Our, but with the fucking my lasers point, and the my diamonds. point on this is that <laughs> it was something that was discussed first in Rise of Planet of the Apes when Caesar is first dealing with a gorilla where he outsmarts a gorilla. Mm-hmm. Right. And the yeah. gorilla, even though becomes more intelligent, is not as intelligent as Caesar. Um, it goes kind of that like Flash Thompson versus Peter Parker kind of tone on on their dynamic. And if you look into the donkeys, for the most part, they're the big burly uh, animals that are when they speak are not as eloquent, even, even the apes uh, that do not speak in that tribe are more yeah. eloquent with their language than some of the gorillas in that group. Very, so, very basic. So it, it's kind of a conversation about the fact that like the, the dumber you are, the worst decisions you make in life. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> true. <laughs> it's yeah. true though. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's I like mean, you're big hurly burly. That's cool. You can punch things. That's great. But if, but you're going to end up like being somebody's bitch. Right. <laughs> this is what this movie is saying. On top of all that, I agreed, but going back to even, I like how we, we call him Dobby now. Um, but the bad ape, bad ape. or whatever. Let's Dobby the house ape. Is, as serious and like like underlying politics, whatever with this movie, towards the end there they put in just enough of that comic relief, with mm-hmm. with him and the the way they were communicating, like just some of the goofiness, was done. I thought just right. Like sometimes you know sometimes movies just really try to shove like it's a serious movie, but we have to be funny at the same time. This. Had, I thought it just added enough touch with that character being added in. Yeah, I agree. Uh, he actually Dobby the House Ape was my favorite character of the movie. Like I love Caesar, and you know everybody was great in it. But that character was awesome because no matter what horrors he's seen, it was almost like he had this child. Saw a lot of horrors, horrors uh, <laughs> in the mountains. <laughs> well, you know, so you got to make money everywhere. A lot, a lot uh, of like sexy lots, chimpanzees lots of... going like, <laughs> <laughs> got tassels on their uh, little ape nipples. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that he was All right, uh, stop. He was All so right. uh, he, he was he was so uh, no matter what horrors uh, horrors uh, Dobby had seen. Uh, it was still very innocent in the fact that he saw not just like people, he saw other apes, but he was like, no matter what I've seen, like friends, like trust, openness. And that was a cool thing about a character in a really dark, sad movie. And how great of a of a casting decision was it to bring in somebody like Steve Sod for that? Oh, sure. Who takes nothing seriously? No, no yeah, absolutely. never anything seriously. It's just absolutely beautiful. There was a glint uh, when the when Bad Ape showed up that unfortunately didn't escape my my thought process while watching the movie is that his high pitched voice reminded me a little bit of the pedophile from Family Guy. Oh my god! Uh, so <laughs> I was just, yeah, I was just hey Caesar, I got some candy in my pocket. Yeah, like, you want to grab it? I you, was just wondering. You get back here, Caesar. <laughs> you know, like I was just waiting. You get for your fat ass back here. Where, where he starts <laughs> looking, <laughs> looking at Cornelius <laughs> like <laughs> you get back here, Cornelius. Yeah, like you, oh buddy, like, not, little son you're gonna of have bitch. to reach deep for that tootsie roll because it was obvious. Call me. It was obvious that Bad Ape was an older ape. He had he was part right. of the zoo before all this stuff went down. Yeah. He had been living alone for a while, so he played basically the crazy old man character. Yeah. The hermit, yeah. The hermit, the crazy yeah. hermit of uh, Planet well, of the Apes. And he didn't even have a lot of hair, you know, like if you no. notice he had like way less hair, all and you know. This but he def- rocked that life preserver. God damn right. Uh, there's <laughs> a lot of tropes that are used in this movie, but turning it on its head and making it ape centric. Uh, makes it kind of weirdly fresh and new. Like yeah. we had a similar mm-hmm. character um, post uh, more, uh, or or uh, post uh, getting the weird squid creature to fuck with him in Rogue One. 
The oh pilot, yeah, 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 yeah. Where he was just like he kind of knew stuff, but he was also fucked up, and you had to deal with the fucked up and the new stuff at the same time. And mm-hmm. he was also at points comic relief for that reason. Yeah, um, but this ape, it being comic, it was because it was an ape is okay, but uh, yeah. he was like dementia level of stuff on some points. Oh yeah, and we're like <laughs> dementia ape is funny, you know. But it was like <laughs> yeah, it was. Like it an, was. A, a, if it was John Lithgow's character and he was like dementia, like in the first one, we'd be like, oh. that is so oh. sad, yeah. so yeah. fucking sad. So yeah. I, uh, so fucking sad. I will disagree with that. I think he's probably more on the Force Gump level where he understands the he basics. was running yes. <laughs> more like climbing it was, it was running from the <laughs> yeah. military but no i think it, i i i see what you're saying with that because of the sort of the innocence of not knowing or not being able to remember pores or whatever the case is but no. he did he was more of a he was more of like he was just eternal no matter what was going on even if he knew something was bad was still weirdly eternally optimistic about it which is very strange in a character especially going through a timeline like that yeah but i mean he he did have like as much as we crack on the whole force gumpness of his character he obviously had some sort of level of intelligence at least at some point sure because I oh, mean, yeah. he had enough to be able to escape that same situation that 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 caesar and all the rest of the apes found themselves in right well, that re- that intelligence really came through when they were talking about moving forward and trying to find this troops. And he was like, here, you can have this thing that you've been fucking with, kid. Um, the yeah. Nova yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, because he didn't want to lose that interaction with, like, apes. And additionally, when he had the conversation with Caesar later that night, where they talked about that, like, this fucking human killed his fucking child and his wife. And he's fucked up about it. And he's like, yeah, I had a kid one day. Uh, or I had a kid back in the day, and some shit went down. Is he going to be where you're looking? If if he is, then yeah, I'll take you. After he was like, no, we're not going there. Right. Like, that shows intelligence. He understands not only he, he can empathize at that point. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and not only empathize, but he's willing to put his life on the line for a new person that he doesn't have any kind of real relationship with because he can uh, empathize with that character. Right, and well, and it even shows like when he noticed that the human girl was cold, so he gave up his jacket. I mean, he, e- even though she wasn't an ape, like part of his race, he was still willing to be like, oh, wait, that is a child. There was some intelligence to realize the difference with things there. But see, to me, that also leads into what became one of my, like, I loved him through all three, through all three of the movies. Maurice. Maurice. Yeah, Maurice. The fucking yeah. advisor, the voice, like, sitting on Caesar's like shoulder the whole time. Yeah. The uh, the Jiminy Cricket of yeah. the, uh, oh, yeah. of the Apes movies. He totally was. And it's funny, because although he was the Jiminy Cricket, and we're talking about, and, and Dobby, he was, like, just as innocent in the thought process. Oh, yeah. One was yeah. very intelligent. He understood all aspects, but still focused on the positive. One was just oblivious to the negative even though it was happening to him all the time and like when you have those sort of like contradicting characters or contrasting characters in there i I, you know i can't imagine better written especially for a fucking ape like you know like the way that they showed it you don't you're not going to get better than that now right now uh matt reeves and the writers put two characters that stole the show. Although, have you ever thought that, like, the orangutan is basically the Ferengi of apes because they have the weird, oh, like, Jesus. face flaps? Uh, like, dude, he wasn't like trying to... Nose. If you just care about what they look like, Hobbit. Yes. I, as, far, <laughs> as far as my apes and how I feel about them, you're goddamn right. That's all I care so about. So, Ferengers were very angry and greedy, and all they wanted was, like, you know, to and, steal gold. And the orangutan apparently like young children. So, you know, um, he, it's, the orangutan gotta make had it weird. empathy oh, for on. the sadness of this child and what <laughs> they were right. going through. Dad had a, uh, Dan had David. a, uh, not, not gross point. No, but, but <laughs> gross more, point Blake. I mean, more, like to your point about Maurice though, I mean, Maurice was always the voice of reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. throughout. It, like even starting from the beginning before they even escaped cap- captivity, um, at the zoo. Yeah, um, in in the first one, um, and this one to to see his, that character really evolve, uh, to talk about him being <laughs> basically evolve. 
<laughs> that was done on purpose. Bark, 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 bark. Uh, but to see him, but to see him uh, talk about number one about uh, you know Caesar with his actions turning into basically being like a new version of Coda. Coba, Coba, Coba. Sorry, um, Coda was a Led Zeppelin sh- album. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but see, basically, uh, at first, talking about him uh, acting a lot like Koba to right. begin with, um, to see that evolve and then towards the end to actually to, to be like, oh, great, well, I'm going to tell your story. And to not only see him sign it, but to see him speak it was just an excellent thing. Because yeah. like, throughout the entire thing, Maurice was very silent. And I mean, you you saw a lot of his communication through sign language. I thought he I heard him end. say a little thing right at the meeting of the girl, and I couldn't tell if that was actually like a word or if he just like did a ooh. That like, was I, I think he just yeah. made like noise. Uh, I, I think, think he just made yeah, noise. noise. Okay, uh, but I love that they brought Koba as a huge um, uh, effect on Caesar because Caesar's entire yeah, yeah he yeah. was the Ra's al Ghul like the Batman Rage. begins like. Raish, whatever. They say it in 10 You're different ways. He, he was the Apal ghoul <laughs> no, of the but, situation. But what he was, was he was the, ref, like, to Caesar, he was what exactly what he didn't want to be. You know, Koba started this. Koba this and that. But when he saw what, the way Koba saw things, once he lost what he lost, you know, it was easier. And he understood that. So Koba was haunting him. He saw the dark side. He did. <laughs> He totally saw the dark side. He saw the anger. He saw the fear. And he saw what Koba probably felt at the time, which is what led him to take the actions that he took. And uh, I thought that for a movie like this, to put a level, that sort of level of uh, understanding about yourself and what you're doing for an ape uh, in this movie was actually quite genius. And using Uh, Koba with the bloody face, I mean, the visuals were just gorgeous. Yeah. Well, yeah, um, I think it was it was actually pertinent to the story that Koba kept coming back because yeah. during Rise, you had uh, Caesar becoming aware um, once he got the, I guess you call it medication at that point because that's what it was supposed to be. It's supposed to be a medication yeah. for once Alzheimer's. Once he stepped into the Terrigen mist as the <laughs> yeah. Marvel fan. Yeah, as a Marvel fan would say, yeah, the Terrigen mist and started break, becoming let's aware. Let's not bring Marvel into this, and, okay? No, let's, let's just pull all the shit oh, in. God like, damn it. Started learning and, you know, and, and realizing that they were being mistreated in the zoo and then a whole uprising, right? You had Rise. But up up until the point in Dawn when Koba stepped and, you know, confronted, you know, Caesar about you know what the humans really are, what they really are and and all that everyone just followed caesar all he dealt was people that like were thankful for him for giving them the gift of being aware and be and, and, and the higher and the higher learning and whatnot and koba was the first really resistance that he came across outside of the humans within his own kind and having to deal with being a leader and dealing with somebody who betrayed him and started a war and then having to come to the conclusion of killing his own kind. That was that was a huge step in Dawn. And it makes perfect sense that that's what's haunting him the entire time through war. Oh, sure. War. Absolutely. Like, it all makes perfect sense. Right. Yeah. And I, I completely agree with you. And that goes along with nature versus nurture. Caesar was nurtured with love and compassion. Koba was not. Exactly. So their perceptions of the world were completely different. And it took true horrors for Caesar to see it through Koba's eyes, which was losing his family. Well, no, and and of course they brought that full circle, though, right? Because you know, it, even in Dawn, where Caesar was saying, "No, ape doesn't kill ape," okay, and then of course we start seeing his visions, um, in 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 War for the Plants of the Apes, really right after he kills, uh, right after he kills the uh, the albino ape, because, and and I don't think he intended to do it. I mean, you can see he he basically just wanted to keep him quiet, but after he killed him, that's really when you started to see Koba actually uh, go. What Koba actually go? What? I mean, sorry, that's when you really Caesar? saw Caesar. Like, I mean, what well, that's when the was, first like, vision came through. See, yeah, yeah. But that's when you see Koba actually start to show up in his visions. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, it was right after that. Yeah, because um, yeah, I I, I don't know if it was strictly because. You can't really just say strictly because they weren't shown uh, nurture because once they were in that group, Koba was being nurtured. He was being loved. He just couldn't, even though love was around him, he couldn't let go. He couldn't like deal with what they had done to him. 
but he was being loved at that point in Dawn. So I don't know if it's naturally na- nature versus nurture where even though if you're raised and nurtured, then you're, you're like Caesar. But if you're raised in, you know, where you've, you've dealt with, you know, just shit and then you're in nurture. So I guess nature, laws of nature fuck with you. And then you're, you, you then, then you have the nurture aspect. It, it doesn't necessarily bring you back or pull you back from because he was loved in that community. Like he had brothers. He had a family, you know, even though he lost. Right. It's not black and white, guys. That's that's all I can say. Because I mean, the apes are black, and those are all white men, so well, it kind of no, is black was, and white. I was uh, saying, uh, except uh, for the white apes. But also, they have silver. Lowdown is also both black and white. So yeah. Our little like Oreo. Best song. of both worlds, I know. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, oh, Lord. Um, yeah, Lowdown is brought, on Vitiligo incarnate. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> but. um Sammy Sosa. <laughs> oh, I, oh, oh. We had to bring it current. All right. right. Scotty. Anyway, the, what the fuck was I even talking about? I have no apes. idea. Crazy apes. Um them damn but dirty. Damn it's dirty. it's not You're just damn dirty. Cle- oh, the damn dirty apes. It's not clean cut, let's put it that way, on there because <laughs> like like fucking uh <laughs> like uh, what's his fuck in Come this on. movie? What's the- his fuck? <laughs> what's his fuck? <laughs> I, I, I drank too much gravy. The Colonel? <laughs> the Colonel? Anyway. Colonel. Woody Harrelson. You got Woody the- Harrelson. Are you yes. starting to Big. revert back to not using language? Yeah, no shit. Virus got you? We need to anyway, sign language. Koba, like anybody, would have been, even if he didn't do what he did in the second movie, would have by the third. And he probably would have been, he probably would have even overturned Caesar in the third movie because there would have been more following. They became more fearful yeah. as they were being hunted. Right. And that's why, you know, they the humans had the donkeys or like why Winter became a traitor. It was out of fear. It wasn't whether loved or not loved at that point. Well, right. Well, well, you know, fear oftentimes overcomes love in, in a lot of those situations. I mean, that's just that's why fear is so powerful. But to go back to what he was saying, uh, whereas Koba was not nurtured, he was raised in a cage, beaten, abused, period. Caesar, on the other hand, from a baby, was raised with love and respect. So you have you have two sides of the same coin. Right. And then one grows up to be very angry. Okay, they see humans. They they she Koba grows smart, sees humans for what he thinks they are. And then you have Caesar. He sees humans for what they th- what he thinks they are because he's seen one side. Then he sees the dirty side, and then it switches. It's all a matter of perspective, and where you're at at that time. Uh, but nurture is an is eventually, in my opinion, it's going to affect your decisions from then on. And it did it Caesar, but he not Koba. Not Koba. Koba was too angry. Anger seeped in too deep. Exactly. Like, Nurture did not save Koba. Now, um, Koba would not have taken over in the third movie because if Koba hadn't done what he'd done, there would have been no war because Koba started the fucking war. Right. Right. He would not have taken over. Well, no, by he he went into the camp and caused the war to start between the humans. I'm saying it would have happened later. No, well, they would have been the, afraid. There would have been no, no fear. They would have been hunted because Wait. they wouldn't have called the military to come mm, down. Here's that, my, the whole end of the movie was because of Koba. Here's my argument, though. This this is actually why the, this series of films is so fucking brilliant because it really talks about uh, what we've seen in so many instances in human uh, interaction, but uh, wars and political like breakdowns. Is that you've got the reactionary approach to things and you've got the diplomatic approach to things uh you can see that in the civil rights movements in the united states you can see that in any kind of like coups in countries where are you know there's the uh attacking uh dictator that is overtaken by somebody that like bolsters the people you know vietnam this is a story as old as the human race uh the reason why we're able to approach it objectively is because it's apes instead of human beings. If it was human beings in this note, we wouldn't be able to take, we wouldn't be able to objectively look at it the same way. That's the beauty of sci-fi. That's the absolute 100% best thing of sci-fi. We can objectively look at stuff about ourselves because we put it in aliens or apes or any other stuff. Well, that's why you have movies like Saving Private Ryan. You, you, you've got the, uh, fuck them up before they fuck us Coba. And then you've got, uh, you've got Caesar who's like, Oh no, we'll fuck them up if they start some shit to a certain point. But 
on the defense, but, on the offense. But yeah, stuff. yeah. But yeah. but like ultimately, I want to find peace if that's the option. If the ultimately last resort is we fucking murder the shit out of them. Right. Um. That's been the story of humanity, and that's the beauty of this fucking series. They yeah. nail the shit out of it. Mm-hmm. Um. Because there's been so many times that. Cobas happen where they instigate some shit to be like, oh yeah, no, see they're oppressing us, you know, like they're right. We need to get them um, because they fucked us up. That's the the false flag bullshit that all right. the all the conspiracy that are just period, the pre the people. preemptive strike just because they we know that they're gonna do they're something. gonna do it anyway. They're going so, to. Yeah, it's totally yeah. a twenty four episode. <laughs> if you oh, ever yeah. watch twenty four. It's always one side yeah. doing something small to yeah, set yeah. off a bigger no, but scale is thing. but was was. Were were Koba's actions in the second one really that like off base? I mean, if you think about it, yes, what, they well, were. No, no, no. hear me yeah, out here. They for were. A second. No, hear me out for a second. So, okay. you have you have Caesar, who at that point obviously was already skeptical. Um, they're allowing these humans to come to basically their camp at that point, so they'd be able to get electricity to be able to take care of what they needed to. Um, one of those humans decides to take things into their own hands, even after Caesar says, okay, you can come in. Um, my one rule is no weapons. Okay. Um, the one guy who, you know, Scotty and I were talking about this yesterday after seeing the movie. Um, you know, he's been in uh, Invincible and uh, a couple other things that we've right. seen. Bruce Willis? No, not Bruce no, Willis. No, he's the brown. Bruce he's Willis the... wasn't in Invincible. Fuck. He um, was in Band of Brothers too. He's Oz. oh, I, I was he's thinking Unbreakable. Sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you just lump all bald people together, don't you? So, yeah, all right, pretty much. But you know, it, I think if if he hadn't have showed up and and brought that 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 shotgun with him when they came back to the base, I don't know if 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 uh, if Koba at that point would have done what he did. All right. I think if if you would have had a situation where they just came up, if they just came in, they did the work that they needed to be able to get their generators going, and and went back. I mean, you you might even end this with like just the second chapter. Opinion on that? I think he still would have. I think Koba was still so broken from what happened in his life that all that did was push push his timetable uh, quicker. So I bet you four, he was so still we'd four so... Movies. We'd have four yeah. movies instead he of... Possibly, saw, yes. <laughs> only yeah. the strong survive might makes right sort of thing. Right. Yeah. What I love with the Koba thing is that the reason why this uh, haunted him a little bit uh, was his uh, dealings with Winter. When they met Winter um, at at the at the base. And then afterwards, Koba showed up and was like, apes don't kill apes. Koba was totally planning on murdering Caesar. Like, that he was, tried. Like, he shot yeah, him. Yeah, he, he shot tried. Him. Like he was trying to fucking Which is awesome because a murder course, the, the name. So so Kobo is just like I mean I can murder <laughs> apes, but you totally shouldn't. So he's like feeling guilty about like murdering apes from an ape that would totally murder apes. But an right. ape that he already murdered. Yeah, that he already murdered. <laughs> that's like that's the thing is like that he was over already above murdering apes. Is it? Uh, and he was feeling guilty about it from an ape that, mur- uh, it's but, that but wait a minute but yeah. at, but at the end of dawn when when he he doesn't really kill koba he does he just doesn't save koba cuz so remember he's at batman the, at, at yeah he's batman. batman well i'm not no yeah. i'm not saying he's batman we want to go down, time, we're go down this road no but what, yeah, when they, when you, they koba, get but no I'm but when they get you. to that point i don't have to no but when they get to that point where where he's like you know what about not killing apes he's like you're not an ape. I mean, he, he makes that clear, just straight up distinction between Koba and the rest of everybody that hangs that that yeah. is in that tribe. That um, Koba is not the same as everybody else. He's not, and he's you know, it, it's it's an exception to me at that point. But it, actually, it's kind of cool when you say that because if you think it's like saying like, oh, you can do this, like you can take these actions. Are you even human? Like you're not human. <laughs> Are you ape? Like, you know, it's it's funny when it's funny to say that. It's, it really depends on how you're looking at the situation at the time. We uh, we're getting close to the end of this episode. No, and we have barely touched bullshit at all on the original trilogy. So I think it's it's safe to say that we can do uh, an original original trilogy um, episode. I, I yeah. see Roy Rage. 
I see Roid Rage. The fucking trilogy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry the original, uh, the series. anthology Apes, or series. series. Oh my god. <laughs> Planet of the Apes. You're and gonna its punch sequels. him later, right? No, I'm not gonna punch him. All right, god. I feel sorry for stupid people. Not, not on video, anyway. Not on video. <laughs> not where there's evidence. No evidence. <laughs> okay, so we'll stay away from the original trilogy, and we're. Uh, we're gonna... <laughs> god. Hobbit, I'm gonna punch you now. Yes, you go. <laughs> I'm going ham. Uh-huh. Uh, we're we're gonna find another time to do an episode all about Planet of the Apes and all original, its sequels. all right. its sequels, the original and the series and the cartoon and everything yes. like that. We're gonna That'd get be way awesome. more in depth about it because we we loved War of Planet of the Apes and its first two movies. The trilogy, yeah, this the trilogy, trilogy. Yeah, this trilogy well, is so good amazing. that we we barely even noted on the the yeah. first. Please, so. please watch all of this. To be fair, also this. if you look at it, it has everything that we tend to shit on: trilogies, reboots, whatever. Somewhat, it's and not a reboot; like, it's a rebirth. It's it's re- about it's reimagining. However, you want to put it, a, it's no. actually a prequel. But but speaking, I was yeah, but say, it, but speaking it's of still different speaking, from the original. Speaking of a rebirth, uh, um, it's a prequel. Now, exactly. I, I I completely agree with you. I think I think like that this is this is basically before. the start, and you know when we see characters like Nova, <laughs> when we see Cornelius being brought into it and in, in more of a prominent role, um, what's to say that they're not going to branch off and do a whole. So Cornelius new, is going like, to be like a stand up, like just like a human ape when he's older. Well, no, he's going to be. Okay. I mean, we've already seen Cornelius in the original movie. Yeah, but he's like so. He but a he's straight dude, and and you know. Yeah, but that's that's old technology that's know, all we're talking about at that point if you were to look at this as a prequel from the original uh trilogy lowdown trilogy mm-hmm. there's mm-hmm. only three there's definitely not like more than three mm-hmm. uh lowdown <laughs> except for the other two uh, yeah. except for the other except two, the other two that. <laughs> um you've got cornelius you've got nova in those so if this is actually a prequel there's only maybe 20 30 t- years top uh bet- between the two the the thing is, this was never meant to be a pre a prequel to the original series. No, no. So no. they're re envisioning the timeline here. So right. you can have um a different approach to the original Planet of the Apes. And I would be interested to see what happens. Yeah. There. I I if you get the same people involved to do a straight up Planet of the Apes movie, yes. Yes. Matt Reeves. I am down. I am fucking down. But before we continue on Charleston with anything else, death. um, before we finish the episode, I think it's very important that we talk about the be all end all of mocap acting. Uh, the, yeah, the person, Andy Serkis, that honestly, yeah, if, if this person God, was not dude. involved with this project, this project wouldn't have this much. Like, it wouldn't have made it past the first movie. No, Andy fucking no. Serkis. Oh my yes. God, man. Yes, uh, Andy Serkis. And we've argued that this deserves an Oscar. By the way, because that's regardless, not a, it's acting. It's that's fucking not a acting. circus full of people named Andy. It's S- an actual S-E-R-K-I-S. person. S E R K I S. Andy Circus. <laughs> he uh, give it to us. His acting ability, and you could say what you want. He's wearing a suit. He's wearing motion capture. He's not actually there. Bullshit. Everything he does, everything he says, every emotion on his face is real, and it's captured digitally and put. Into the form of a fucking ape. It does not make it any less of a performance. Absolutely. No, well, and it, we, we've all kind of talked about this. It's not just even what's in his face. You look at the behind the scenes on what he's done with these movies. Mm-hmm. His The way he stands, the, he'll buck out that chest and the way he holds his arms. He's got extensions, just, too, on his arms and yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah, to give it like the actual like measurement and everything. He he does it all to crouching down and actually doing the, some of the signing. He the full motion that you see in Caesar and in most of these other apes are people doing this, but Andy Circus spearheaded this whole thing. Yeah, I mean he's done Gollum. He's done. Sorry, did I did I? Start you're fine. Yeah, I'm, you're I'm fine. Go, just go. All right. So I mean, because obviously he's done Gollum. He's done Kong. Um, I mean, Kong. What? King Kong. And what? Uh, he was Kong. That was he, he was, was Kong. Kong. Peter Kong Jackson. Was Kong. The, the that other, was in the Peter Jackson King Kong. He was Kong. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I wouldn't brag about that. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's not Andy Serkis's fault. Yeah. But I mean, he's he's yeah he's he's definitely phenomenal. I, he, he's totally totally worthy. The thing is, is that uh, fortunately for Andy Serkis, he knew the right people at the right time, and he yeah. got in on the very beginnings of true mocap. 
Yeah. Yes. And uh, that that really is part of the whole Peter Jackson thing with Lord of the Rings and all the stuff going on there. My wheelhouse, as far as my name goes, at least. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Uh, hobbits and uh, <laughs> but the thing that happened from that is that he did such a good job of portraying a multiple personality character uh, that and also knowing how to work with new technology that he got hit on with uh, with Peter Jackson vehicles yeah. like King Kong mm -hmm. and then further from that he actually has a school I think in California where he teaches motion capture acting to mm -hmm. other actors oh see I yeah. was not aware of that because he's at the forefront of uh, yeah, a mocap, nice. and so oh, he's, he's like the, da Vinci the, of the guy to yeah. go to. Yeah, which is why I'm saying is that um, with with the acting that we saw in War Planet of the Apes with Caesar, and the amount of like incredible um, a acting that he's done in mocap, I have no doubt within the next uh, five years, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that that's maybe pushing it, but in the next five years. You're gonna get a mocap nomination for best actor or best supporting actor, and, and think about really how about how difficult that is. I mean, you're you're talking about somebody who's a lot of times it's just them. And obviously, they they've got all of their prop stuff on that they're using for, that they're using for the mocap, but it's really a lot of times it's it's just them doing the work. Mm -hmm. So there's not a whole lot of other people around them. Nothing to, to go act off to. Of, to, to really yeah. to yeah. react to, to 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 work off of, and it makes it really impressive. What 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 makes an actor great and is the ability the to uh, take emotion and transfer it to the person watching it on screen, yeah. right? Yes. So if you do that, regardless of the fact if you're in human form or if they just digitally put a fucking ape over top of you. If everything is still you, then that's still acting. And the Academy needs to fucking recognize no that. No fucking doubt. That, well, and that, that's basically what I was going to go on as well, is that, I, I mean, as as great as, like, there are, there are plenty of great actors out there, why separate just because it's motion capture? Mm -hmm. it, it's The talent is obviously way better if you're able to do this with working with way less when it comes to, like, what you like how things play off of what you're what you're doing the reaction and stuff like that if you have to show emotion and you're looking at a blank screen and you nail it that's way better fucking acting than most dudes out there um uh, i would put up and uh, i wouldn't say it's as good because this is like bestill my heart but the interaction between um uh, between the colonel and caesar uh, where they talked about like, would you show me mercy in the same situation? It's like I showed you mercy. I showed you mercy when I asked for peace, and then you came after. Right. Me. But that interaction is not as good because this is like the best. But that fucking walking hopper interaction in True Romance, it oh, kind of yeah. briefly <laughs> reminded me yeah. of these like Sucks. two hard asses that are not backing the fuck up. Right. Like, yeah. no. So you got the immovable object in the. Uh, that being force said, is, in that yeah. entire scene, there was never a single moment that I thought about the fact that that's a CGI character. Right. That was a real character no. to me in that moment. Yeah, and that alone should be why mocap artists like like fucking circus should be nominated or considered for fucking Oscar stuff. Absolutely. I, and on, on that note, though, we we got to get. All right, know, I just want to say I I picture in my head both of them face to face except for he's got the motion capture suit and you know Woody Harrelson is going fuck it's really hard to do this to take it seriously <laughs> <laughs> right like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what makes yeah. it even harder than a regular right. actor yeah. on actor well, and but again mad props awesome. to Woody Harrelson for being able to do that knowing that you know you see this dude with dots all over his face but he has to react like he's talking to this talking ape Twice. Woody Harrelson is stoned like ninety nine percent of the time. Actually, so he came out. Whatever like, works. Everything. Whatever different works. When you're stoned. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, on that note, we're going to finish off this episode of Geeks Under the Influence. Thank you guys so much for listening. Again, check out all of our stuff at guipodcast.com and uh, join the conversation. You can uh, check us out uh, by by sending messages to eight zero four. 505 4 GUI. That's 804 505 4484. Yes. 
or emailing us at geeksundertheinfluence at gmail.com. You can also just message on all of our stuff on our social media. You find all those links at GUIpodcast.com. Thank you for the use of Little Girl by the Gajir Experiment on the intro and for the use of Dead by Dawn by the Creepazoids on the outro. Thank you so much for listening and we'll find you guys next week. Join us or die. Shut the fuck up, Hobbit. <laughs> <laughs> GUIPodcast.com <laughs>